Hi, my name is Sean Pittock. I'm a neurologist at the Mayo Clinic. I direct the Center for MS and Autoimmune Neurology, and I'm very excited uh, to spend some time with you to tell you uh, a little bit about NMOSD, but also about uh, this uh, recent drug trial uh, that uh, was completed by Alexion and my colleagues. NMOSD is a rare uh, inflammatory central nervous system disorder. It's characterized by relapsing disease uh, attacks of inflammation of the optic nerves that can cause patients to go blind and relapsing uh, attacks of inflammation of the of spinal cord, which can cause longitudinally extensive lesions, but also sometimes short lesions in the cord that could result in patients having difficulty with walking, weakness in the legs, uh, difficulty with sensations, and sometimes bowel and bladder problems. Also, patients can occasionally get attacks in the back of the brainstem, which can cause intractable nausea and vomiting that can be very disabling. The condition is severe, it's disabling, and in fact, before we had good treatments, about half of the patients with this disease were blind, or about half were in a wheelchair after about five years of disease, so very severe. The disease was generally misdiagnosed as multiple sclerosis, but interestingly, multiple sclerosis drugs make this disease worse. What we have found since the discovery of the biomarker for this disease, which is the water channel antibody, it's the first ever blood test that's specific for any form of central nervous system demyelination. And we've been working for about the last 20 years to try and understand how does this antibody cause these patients to lose their vision or lose the function in their lower extremities. And what we found is that when the antibody binds to its target, the water channel, on the astrocyte, this is one of the glial cells in the brain, there's billions of them, and it makes up about 70% of the brain, um, the uh, antibody activates a protein called complement. This is an inflammatory protein, and this protein, once activated, injures the astrocyte and causes a lot of inflammation. So what we thought was that if we block complement, perhaps we can stop this disease. And that's exactly what we did. So uh, in the early days, we did an open label trial where we used a drug called eculizumab. This is a, an injectable antibody that blocks complement. And we essentially stopped clinical attacks in an open label setting in that study. And that led to the PREVENT trial. The PREVENT trial was a randomized placebo-controlled, blinded study, and the results were dramatic. And what we found was is that we could essentially reduce the chances of you having an attack of NMOSD by about 95% if you uh, used eculizumab. Now, one of the problems for patients with eculizumab is that it needs to be infused every two weeks. This can be a big problem, as you can imagine. Patients need to get to an infusion center. Uh, sometimes they can't make it to the infusion center. And if they miss their dose, then they put themselves at risk because then they remove that protective ability or the protective nature of the eculizumab drug. So ravalizumab is a new kid on the block. It's the new uh, kind of um, uh, brother of eculizumab. So what they've done is the Alexion have adjusted or manipulated eculizumab by creating four amino acid changes. And that has resulted in ravalizumab having a longer um, duration of action. In other words, uh, the drug needs to be infused not every two weeks, but every eight weeks. And so this is a huge potential benefit for patients. And that's why it was very important to do this study was to see if this drug, ravalizumab, which essentially has the same mechanism of action of eculizumab, but is much more convenient for patients to see whether this drug could have the same dramatic benefit for patients with NMOSD. And what we found was that when we took patients and we gave them ravalizumab, we actually didn't have any clinical attacks in any of the patients treated over 72 weeks, which for us uh, was very impressive. Now, a couple of things about this study that I think are important for you to know. First of all, this wasn't a randomized blinded study. 
Uh, and we didn't have a placebo arm, an active placebo arm, because now there are actually not only eculizumab is an FDA approved drug for this very devastating illness, but there are two other medications, inevolizumab and satralizumab, that are also approved by the FDA for treatment of this condition. And so given the fact that it's such a severe illness, it was considered unethical to have a active placebo arm in such a drug study. And so because of that, we used a um, placebo arm from the PREVENT trial. In other words, an external placebo arm, the placebo arm from a different study, the initial PREVENT trial. And we compared the results in the active treatment arm in the CHAMPIONS study, the Ravalizumab trial, with that um, um, external comparator, uh, that historical comparator. And so that was one novel approach. And I think this is very important because as we move forward with trials in rare diseases, uh, it will be very important to think about uh, these types of trial design. Uh, but what was most striking was the fact that we had no clinical uh, adjudicated attacks uh, in uh, the patients that received ravalizumab. So it was very, very exciting. And I think this is uh, good news for patients.